my sermon today will be uh, 65 minutes long. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Six to five minutes long? <laughs> <laughs> no, it will be, uh, it won't be that long. I want to thank you all for not getting up and walking out on David. I'm not sure what watch he was looking at. <laughs> what he said, I have, I have one minute to go. Before, so. Anyway, thank you. Uh, I actually thought it was a good sermon in the middle there. <laughs> all right, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to be in Colossians chapter 4. Colossians 4, verses 2 through 4. It'll be on the screen. But, You don't see too many people carrying their Bible anymore. I mean, they have their they have their phone. And I understand that, but I wish everybody would bring their Bible to church. Um, Rebecca brings her Bible to church. I'm telling you, it's a big, that's a thick Bible. Right there. That's gonna weigh twenty pounds. Huh? <laughs> Thank you for bringing them. Yeah. So. And teaching and teaching the Bible, uh, especially like I wrote Odell, Odell in here, and we asked people to do different readings. There are so many different translations, and I really think there's better translations and weaker translations. I think the New King James is a good translation. I think NIV is a good translation. I think the ESV, even the Standard Version, is a good translation. Um, I'm not sure what Bible that you use, but. Um, if, if you like it and it speaks to you, and the more important thing is it easy to remember verses. Um, I think I think um, most Bibles have John three sixteen the same. That God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Um, that's a good one. And so, as a Christian, we should we should, really should be memorizing Scripture. And so. Um, I would, I would encourage you to remember the, the Roman road, Acts 3.23, Acts 5.8, Acts 6.23, Acts 8.1, um, and uh, anyway, those, uh, they're really good for, for leading someone to Christ. Okay, sermon, the prayer life of a Christian, Colossians 2, uh, Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. Um, that scripture says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And <clears throat> pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. So Paul is writing this, and he's in prison in chains. Pray that I proclaim it clearly as I should. So back to verse 2, devote yourselves to prayer, uh, being watchful and thankful. What, what does that word devote mean? Anybody? Devote? Dedicated? Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, that's a really, yeah, dedicate, dedicate. Um, devote yourself to it. It's, it's, it's really important. So spend time in prayer. Um, and then being watchful and thankful. See how God's going to answer it. And be thankful for his answer. And as we talked about in Sunday school class, there's three answers to prayer. What are they? Yes, no, and wait. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you listen. <laughs> yes, no, and wait. <clears throat> so, um, in uh, uh, F.B. Meyer's book, The Secret of Guidance, he said, The great tragedy of life, the great tragedy of life is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered an offered prayer. And so Jesus said himself, you have not because you asked not. So prayer is one of the most neglect, neglected spiritual gifts. Um, we talk much more about prayer than we actually practice prayer. And so um, it's, it's a shame, it's a crying shame, the, the neglected, neglected prayer of Christians. It's, it's just the most important thing about prayer is not the answer, although that's important. The most important thing about prayer is you're building a relationship with God. And so um, 
as my dad has said, and I heard uh, another other men men say, the only time I see my son, the only time I see my daughter, is when they want something. If I see him, can I have some money? Can I borrow the car? Can I have this? Can I borrow a tool? They they never do, they never come by just to talk, just to say, hey dad, how how's it going? How you doing? Um, and that's God, God wants a relationship with you. Why in the world did He put Adam and Eve in the garden and it says? Um, and they were walking in the cool of the garden together. That's what God wants. More than anything else, he wants a relationship with you. He wants to hear from you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to know your deepest, most intimate thoughts. He wants to know everything about you. It's not our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then it says, give us our daily bread. And so Paul understood the power of prayer. He understood prayer and its power. And prayer was a huge part of Paul. If you read some of the epistles of him, his... What else is name in there? And so, um, we really can't be a good Christian. Can't be a good Christian and not pray. Um, you can't live without breathing, and a Christian should not live without praying. Um, how, how can you have a good marriage? How can you say you have a good marriage and not talk to your spouse? Like two ships in a, just, you know, you walk in and you fix dinner, you don't say anything, you eat dinner, don't say anything, you watch it, and you just go, how, how can you have a good marriage? How can, how can you be a good parent if you don't talk to your kids? How's it going today? You know, <laughs> and how was school? Fine. What'd you do? Nothing. <laughs> so, um, draw, draw it out of them, you know. And so, communication is important. <clears throat> communication is important between people. Communica communication is important between you and a holy, just, righteous God. And so, <clears throat> prayer is the channel of communication um, between you and God, between God and His people. And so, I want to mention a couple of things. Number one is that you and I, we need to pray with persistence. So write that down. Pray with persistence. Because Paul said, devote yourself to prayer. So in the Greek, that um, continued. The aorist tense is one time, one time, and so pray. That means just pray that time. But in this verse, devote yourself to prayer, it means continue, continually pray, continually pray. Um, can you pray while driving your car? Can you pray while you're in the shower? Can you pray while you're watching TV? I'm going to commercials. <laughs> so, so um, persistent prayer, be devoted to prayer. <clears throat> that is an imperative, which means it's a command. Pray, it's a command. And so, um, <clears throat> Persistence for us is not, a, it's not an option. It's an order. It's a duty. It's an order. And so we're going to look at Luke chapter 11 and Luke chapter 18. And so in Luke 11, 1 through 10, uh, we have a promise. And the promise is ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. So it says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. This is the first and the only time that Jesus' disciples came to him and specifically asked Jesus to teach them to do something. First and only time. One day when Jesus was praying, when he finished, the disciples came, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. So even, even in this one, and in, and in Matthew, it start off by praising God, by thanking God, by honoring God. Just don't jump in and say, Dear Jesus, help me. Um, help someone. That God. Uh, 
bread, forgive us our sins, as we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, <clears throat> and you go to him at midnight, and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. Have you ever had that happen? <clears throat> have you <laughs> had anybody call you out of the blue and say, Can I borrow some money? Can I borrow this? You know. Anyway, um, let's go on. A, no, verse 6, a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. That's because at that time, they were all, probably all sleeping in one room. Everybody was on the floor. Everybody was all covered up. Uh, they were down, down for the night. If he had to get up, he was going to probably wake up the whole house. He's got to step over his wife, step over the kids. Just picture that. They're in a, a, a small room. Everybody's asleep. Everybody's in their sleeping bags. And someone knocks on the door, and, you, and they're asking you to get up, wake up the whole house, and give them some bread. So he says, you know, no, <laughs> leave me alone. Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up, and I can't give you anything. Verse 8, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, that's your, your, your boldness, your courage, he surely will get up and give you as much as you need. And so, verse 9, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks find, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. And so, those, those verse 2 are present tense. So it's keep on asking, keep on asking, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on seeking. Keep on knocking, keep on knocking. Jesus says, don't give up in prayer. So his command is for you and I to persist in our prayers. Okay, so we, we, we learn. I'm going to stop at 12 o'clock. So I got 10 minutes. So I'm going to stop at 12, wherever I am. So I just want to just focus on, just focus on this. Um, I just lost my spot by going there. Um, persist, persist in prayer. Um, as we learn, three answers to prayer. Three and three. If you come up with another one, please let me know because I've I've only got three. Yes, no, and wait. <coughs> so Alex, Alex has got a tumor on, has got cancer of the tongue, and we brought her up front. Everybody came up. We laid our hands on her. We prayed, and you prayed. I mean, it was earnest, earnest prayer. Please heal Alex. Please take this cancer away. Please take this off of her. Dear Lord, please help out. Please take this cancer away. And what did the Lord say? No, I'm not taking the cancer away. So we got an answer. No. And so, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, God began an ending. Somewhere in this continuum that we're at, Alice had to go through this. And we don't know why. Uh, it could be she's going to meet some of the people in the hospital. And they're going to see her, and maybe they'll hear her say her first words or something. Or maybe it's at the rest home that she's going to go to, that she gets treatment, that she's going to be able to witness. Maybe it's down the road. We don't know. But we know that it was for her good. It was for her good that she went through this experience. The cancer, the pain, going to the doctors, having them cut out part of her tongue, having them take part of her arm, muscle, put it in her mouth. All that, all that she's going through, it was God's will that she go through this. He said, no, I'm not going to heal Alice. No, rejoice. Because God has a plan, and his plan is much better than anything you or I can think of. Because his plan is perfect. And there's a time down here for this that Alice went through is going to bring fruit to somebody else. That's waiting, and that's trusting, and that's God answering his prayer in his will, not our will. We, we want to spare Alice the surgery, the rehabilitation, the recovery, all that. We want to spare Alice that. And God said, no, Alice is going to go through that. And so are you. So am I. Be persistent in your prayers. Okay, 
Luke 18, 1 through 8. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and what? And what? Not give up. Okay, verse 2. He said, <clears throat> In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared <laughs> about what people thought. Ever know anybody like that? <laughs> that would be a judge or something. I know some people who don't care, don't want care about God, and don't care about anything but themselves, their money, their what they want to do, when they want to do it. I, I know people like that. So he said, in a certain town there was a person who neither feared God nor cared about people, and he was a judge. <clears throat> and there was a widow in the town who kept coming to him with a plea: "Grant me justice against my adversary." For some time he refused. He refused. He refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God and I don't care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, keeps persi per uh, persisting, keeps knocking, keeps seeking, keeps asking, she won't give up, I will see that she gets justice so that she will not eventually come and attack me. <laughs> so, and the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? Won't he bring, won't he bring justice to you and to me? We're, we're, we're his chosen ones. We're his children. We're the children. First John says, we are the children of God. The children of God. When we get to heaven, there's no, no grandchildren, no nieces, nephews, uncles. It's just children. We're his children. And so, will not, verse 7, will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? And cry out, who cry out to him day and night? Will he will he keep putting them off? No, no, he won't answer. Yes, no, wait. Yes, no, wait. Uh, verse eight. I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And uh, he will not. <laughs> he will not. Luke eighteen one says. How he was telling them the parable to show them that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. Two parables on the persistence of prayer. Pray and not give up. And so, uh, everybody know who George, George Mueller is? George Mueller, 1800, started a whole bunch of orphanage. He never asked publicly for a dime, for a penny. He never went public and said, please, um, if you don't, if I don't get ten million dollars, the Lord's going to take me home. Who said that? Was who actually did that on TV? And I said, "Bye." <laughs> so, um, um, George Mueller and uh, another, I can't think, another saint, um, both um, Hudson Taylor, Hudson Taylor, both George Mueller and Hudson Taylor, both never asked the Lord, never asked the public for a dime. Yet they raised millions of dollars. And so George Mueller said, "One of the greatest." Um, prayer warriors of all time, George Mueller, he said, um, it is a common temptation of Satan to make us give up the reading of the word and prayer when our enjoyment is gone, as if it were of no use to read the scriptures when uh, we do not enjoy them, and as if it were no use to pray when we have no spirit of prayer. The truth is, that in order to enjoy the word, we ought to continue to read it. Um, and the way to obtain the spirit of prayer is to continue praying. The less we read the word of God, the less we desire to read it. <clears throat> and the less we pray, the less we desire to pray. The less we read the Bible, the less we want to read the Bible. The less we pray, we don't, we don't want to pray. And, and we fall into that trap. And if the two were to come together, we don't want to read the Bible, we don't, we don't want to pray, um, can you really call yourself a Christian? Well, I mean, you're, you're saved, you're saved. I believe in eternal security. But it's a pretty pathetic thing to have a Christian that's not reading the Bible and not praying. And so George Mueller says, be persistent in prayer. So number one, uh, be persistent in prayer. Number two, pray with passion. Pray with passion. Um, <clears throat> Every time we see Jesus praying, every single time we see, we see him praying with passion. Think about this. 
We see Jesus praying at his baptism. We see him praying when he called his disciples. Very important moment, particularly the disciples. When he withdrew from the crowds, he would pray. Jesus prayed in the morning. Jesus prayed in the evening. After his transfiguration, he prayed. Uh, John 17, um, you should read that chapter. That is the high priestly prayer of Jesus. And in that, he asked the Father to make, as the Father has made him one with the Father, make his disciples, make us one with him. Make us one with him. What a prayer. And his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, if it is your will, if it's your will, Father, it's your will, please take this cup from me, but not my will, your will be done. And as he hung on the cross, he prayed, Father, first, today you will be with me. Today you will be with me in paradise to save the, the thief on his left. And then he, he prayed for his tormentors. Father, please forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus always prayed with passion because he knew who he was talking to. He knew, do we know who we're talking to? You're not talking to me. You're not talking to Billy Graham. I mean, well, that would be okay, a bad example. Um, you're not talking to some famous preacher, some famous evangelist. You're talking to God. And he knew that the, the Father was all powerful. And that's not something to take lightly or casually. You, you have access to the throne of God through the blood, shed blood of Christ. He opened up the Holy of Holies and you can go right in anytime, day or night. So I conclude with this. I know. Okay, I try to conclude. Um, five things that happen when we pray. I'm just going to give them to you. Five things. Um, Prayer forces you to wait. Write that down. Prayer forces you to wait. Prayer empowers you to get in touch with God, with what God is doing. Not what you want. <laughs> Prayer empowers you to get in touch with what God is doing. Number three. Prayer inspires, I'm sorry. Um, prayer joins or unites our heart with God's heart. So prayer unites your heart with God's heart. Four, prayer should inspire us to move forward, to keep moving forward. Not to stand still, not to go backward, but always moving forward. And then five, prayer builds a super strong, stronger personal relationship with God. When we are devoted to prayer, and we're talking to God and honoring Him and praying for others and uh, leaving ourselves to last. And we're just really strengthening that relationship with God. And so Jesus Himself said, Without me, you can do nothing. So without prayer. Um, so, are you persistent in prayer? Are, you know, the worst thing we can do is just token prayer, you know. Dear Lord, please bless this breakfast. Thank you. Amen. Um, in the shower. Dear Lord, have a little time in the shower. Now we can pray in the shower, but have a token, a, a time where you actually sit down and talk to God. Um, are, are, are you filled with passion and intensity? Or are you weak or lacking in real faith? How much time do you spend in prayer thanking God for all that he's done for you? Um, I close, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to say, I'm going to pray. So I'm going to read this, Matthew 6, 5 through 15. You know it. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. So they got the reward. Their reward was, wow, that was a great prayer, scribe. Well, that was such a great, oh, that was so meaningful to me. Right? That's it. That's all they get. They got the reward. But when you pray, Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be, they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask. Do we all realize that? That is, we kind of read right over that. But 
God already knows what you need. He already knows what you need. He knew that Alice was going to have cancer. He knew that he wasn't going to heal her. He, he, knew, he knew. He knew that. And so, it was, but it was important for us to pray for Alice. But that's mostly what our prayers are about, is healing, healing. There, there's so much more. There's the spiritual side of prayer. I bet you everyone sitting out there knows someone that needs Jesus. That is something that is worthy of fasting. My daughter, my son, my daughter, my grandson, my neighbor, my friend, my co-worker, my, they don't know Jesus. Have you ever fasted a meal and just prayed for that person? Just bare your soul. This then is how you should pray. God says, do not keep on, because I think that we heard by that many words, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. This is a model of prayer. It's not, it can be prayed, but it's, it breaks prayer down. It's a scaffolding prayer, a ladder. So, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Everything's done in heaven is perfect. And so God's will is perfect. His answer is perfect. Then, verse 11, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, forgive us our sins, as we also forgive those who sinned against us are our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Um, verse 14. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. That's quite an ominous thing, isn't it? Um, so the greatest tragedy, the greatest tragedy of the Christian life is not unanswered prayer. The greatest tragedy is not praying or just offering up token prayers when I feel like praying at a meal um, or other time. So remember this, much prayer, much blessing. Little prayer, little blessing. No prayer, and oh, no prayer, no blessing. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That is related to money. How much more is that related to prayer? And remember this, God um, whoever sows prayer sparingly will reap sparingly. If you don't think it's important, if you, just, if you just come to God because you want to borrow a wrench or the hammer or five bucks, that's just, that's just sparingly. So why, why would you think God's going to, when you have something really come into your life, why do you think God's going to listen to you? Well, because he's God and I'm his child, okay? Whoever prays sparingly will also reap sparingly. But whoever Praise generously, but also reap generously. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Um, you understand us. Uh, you understand, uh, uh, I'm not sure, our prayerlessness. Uh, but Heavenly Father, we, we desire to have all good gifts from you, and we know all good gifts do come from you. And so help us, Heavenly Father, in our prayer life to, to make prayer our priority. Right, right there with reading the Bible, coming to church, coming to fellowships, and praying. Help us, Heavenly Father. Help us. Or disbelief. Um, just like the Father who came to Jesus and said, Your disciples couldn't heal my son. Um, and Jesus asked him, Do you believe? And one place in the Bible says, Dear Lord, please help my unbelief. So we come to you this morning asking you to help us in our prayer life, help us to make it a priority uh, to per be persistent in prayer. Help us to remember the two parables, and to ask, to seek, and knock, to keep on asking, to keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Heavenly Father, please help us. And Heavenly Father, please, I pray you give everyone here this morning and those listening um, a, a prayer partner Someone that they can call when they're when they're struggling or something's difficult, 
or maybe their faith is waning a little bit, and they can call and talk to someone, and they can be a Barnabas, a son or daughter of encouragement, and they can encourage. And so, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for our salvation, thanking you for this great, great gift of prayer. And Heavenly Father, please help us, um, as Paul said in Colossians, to devote ourselves to prayer, to be persistent in our prayer life, and help the, uh, the two new times we have, or the new time we added Mondays and Wednesdays, the people will, will come out, and uh, we can just have a fantastic, wonderful time in prayer together. Uh, watch you build your church. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.